Assalamu alaikum. Having done the spinal cord and the brain stem, we now move on to the actual bulk of the CNS, the cerebrum. And it's from the cerebrum that we'll be then expanding our study into all its various parts. The cerebrum is composed of multiple parts, which include the telencephalon, that is the part, the colored part you're seeing in front. It includes the diencephalon. It's the internal part, which is hidden inside, which I'll expose in a moment. Composed of the basal ganglia as well. And the cerebellum, however, is distinct from the cerebrum and it's on the back side, right over here. So, let us look at each of these individual parts. And uh, keep in mind, most of this will be uh, useful in the viva. There's little here that will appear in the SQ or MCQ. Maybe some questions they'll ask in the MCQs. But viva, this will be definitely helpful. So looking at the outermost aspect of the cerebrum, on the bottom you can appreciate the brain stem, the medulla, the pons up here, and midbrain is hidden in front. Right over here, the yellow portion you're seeing this is the telencephalon. The frontal lobe of the telencephalon. And notice it has sulcus, sulci and, and the gyri. The sulci basically furrows within the cerebrum while the gyri are these elevations. Over here you can appreciate three of them. Superior frontal, middle frontal and inferior frontal gyrus. Each of these three gyri are separated by two sulcuses, superior frontal sulcus and the inferior frontal sulcus. On the back side, this sulcus right here is the prefrontal sulcus. And this would be the prefrontal gyrus. So these are the gyri and the sulci which compose of the frontal lobe. And the, by the way, just to clarify, the lobe is composed of lobules. So the whole frontal lobe right here is composed of two lobules in front. Moving on further back, we come to the parietal lobule. The parietal lobule, as you can see here, lies behind the central sulcus. The central sulcus is the center point from which you basically expand and label all of the rest. The central sulcus being in the center. In front we have the frontal, behind we have the parietal. And the parietal you can see the post central gyrus right over here and the post central sulcus. In certain models, well in the actual brain itself, you will find the intra parietal sulcus which should be along this area right here. So this intra parietal sulcus will divide the parietal lobe into a superior parietal lobule and an inferior parietal lobule. Having that said, this parietal lobe and frontal lobe in front are forming the majority of the thing you see on the anterior side. Moving on downwards, let's come on to the back. This purple portion is your occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is divided into, well, it's not, we won't say it's divided, it's more like due to this presence of the sulci it's divided into different portions. For example, this one right here, this is your calcarine sulcus. Otherwise, the entirety of the occipital lobe remains as is. You have the calcarine sulcus right here, which extends towards the inside as well. And we'll get to the inside in a moment. There is a parieto occipital sulcus, which is not so apparent here, but if you go to the inside, you can see how it is very prominent. So, these two sulci are important, calcarine and parietal hospital sulcus. And here we have the parietal lobe and the hospital lobe. Finishing off on the external view, we have finally the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe has a superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and an inferior temporal gyrus. It is divided by the superior temporal sulcus and the inferior temporal sulcus. This right here, corresponding to the central sulcus, which is uh, longitudinal, this is horizontal and this is your lateral sulcus. 
the lateral sulcus also can be divided into three parts and ascending limb right over here an anterior limb and a posterior limb right over here so that was the external view in a nutshell uh, one small thing to know, uh, mention is if you see right over here as we go to the inferior part of the temporal gyrus and more towards medially this is the parahippocampal gyrus right over here which extends into the uncus and you can see how it's adjacent to the midbrain here this crust cerebri of the midbrain and this nerve you're seeing here is actually the optic nerve the optic nerve comes from front forms an optic chiasm and heads back it is the structure in the adjacent vicinity obviously the other nerves are also present there here you have the pituitary and the mammillary bodies on the back so now let's look at the internal view for the internal view what I'll do is I will slice the whole thing in half let's just see uh, sorry not like this let's slice here we go I hope uh, this um, actually showing most of the outside I have a better idea let's take these down part by part and that way we'll see most of the internal structure here I'm removing the frontal lobe the gray and white matter part of it and I'll notice on the inside you can appreciate a numerous amount of structures a lot of this is actually your diencephalon the diencephalon is composed of the thalamus the hypothalamus and uh, alongside it is the ventricular system the ventricular system is not exposed here we'll do that separately but it is flowing right around this area and this corpus callosum is present right here this is the center part of the internal part of the telencephalon it is a band of white matter running from front to back the corpus callosum on top has the callosal sulcus this one right here and on top of that the cingulate gyrus but you won't be able to appreciate that here because of the presence of the limbic cortex the limbic cortex will be done separately it's its own um, topic the limbic system so let us remove this as well just to clarify more structures much better here you can see the corpus callosum right over here on top of that is the inducium grecium this is another part of the limbic system the fornix which communicates with the fornix let us remove this part as well here we go now the corpus callosum is nicely exposed and you can see basically it's all whitish because it is these are white uh, fibers and they're running from one hemisphere to the other hemisphere the corpus callosum among the other white fibers present you have your longitudinal fibers and then obviously you have your callosal fibers these ones then you have your association fibers and you also have the descending fibers which are basically your descending tracts they're all white fibers now on top of the corpus callosum as I mentioned we had the cingulate gyrus which is this part above that is the cingulate sulcus and over here you can finally see the internal view of the telencephalon in front is the medial frontal gyrus the medial frontal gyrus as you go back the cingulate sulcus goes and forms a colossal uh, it forms a marginal sulcus here this is your precentral lobule the precentral lobule and behind that you have the paracentral lobule let us uh, remove this other part to make everything visible here we go you can see all the structures again from here and I would like to remove this hospital lobe too so we see it here let's start on the back this time on the back we have the hospital lobe this is your lingula you can see it's a bit of a tongue like shape and here's the calcarine sulcus which was seen outside then we have the precuneus the prior to hospital sulcus the cuneus and then we have the paracentral lobule and the precentral lobule and the medial frontal gyrus and here is the cingulate sulcus 
right over here and the cingulate gyrus and the colossal sulcus with the corpus callosum. That basically covers the spotting of the telencephalon. Now looking at the diencephalon, here we had the corpus callosum. If I were to remove it, you will then notice something right over here. First and foremost, just want to remove this stria. Again, we'll look at all these white fibers and stria later. You can see a bit of the fornix right here. The fornix, it's its own structure. And notice how it is coming on top of the thalamus. Here you have two thalami connected here to each other. And we'll look at this individually. From the thalamus, if we go laterally, the first thing you may notice is this C-shaped structure, chordate. It doesn't look like a C-shape here, but once I isolate it, then you'll notice it's particular C-shape. The chordate is part of the basal ganglia. From there, we come to the right over here, the internal capsule. This is the part where you have passage of all the descending and the ascending tracts when they reach from the thalamus to the part of the brain. Going further outside is the external capsule. And then we have the insular cortex. This is the part of the cortex which is hidden. So let us expose more of this. I'm removing the internal capsule and you can see then we can appreciate the lentiform nucleus, another part of the uh, basal ganglia. The lentiform is composed of a putamen and the globus pallidus. So let me try to isolate this one. And over here, you can appreciate globus pallidus internal part and external. And over here is the putum. They're both colored green because it's part of one whole nucleus. So this is basically a small general overview of all the parts of the cerebrum, telencephalon, diencephalon, basal ganglia, the fornix over here. And you'll see how all these structures are in close vicinity. This is a general overview. The next, what we'll look at is we'll start with the diencephalon part. Because I've covered most of the telencephalon here and for the spotting. But diencephalon, we'll be looking at the thalamus. And from there, and also the hypothalamus as well, which I didn't actually show you here because it was actually located at this portion right over here, from which it ascends into the pituitary gland. Because this optic nerve is in the way, let's remove this and the chism. You can see those structures more clearly now. Here we go. From the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus sulcus, we have the pituitary, the infundibulum is the one which is suspending the pituitary and the memory bodies in the back. In any case, the overview for the cerebrum is done. We'll move on to the next topic in the next video.